Modding in Galaxy of Heroes is just frustrating. It's difficult and a lot of us just don't know where to start. My name is Glamit and in today's video I'm going to be showing you where to start when you're modding and how to make sure you're getting the most out of your mods. So guys, when it comes to modding, of course, the best mods should be done on the best characters. So for example, say you have all of the Galactic Legends in this game. That is obviously where your mods should primarily be going. Uh, if you have Lord Vader, Ray, JML, SLKR, Jabba, C, JMK, Leia, you name it. If you have it, this is where your mods go. Now, the next thing after this is if you have any outstanding characters. Maul, Commander Ahsoka, Malgus, for example, this is where your other best mods are going. Now, where does that leave us? Because, guys, there is a real pitfall a lot of us fall into, and that is where we kind of put multiple good mod sets on the same team. And then you end up with one team that may be insanely well modded, but the rest of your roster really struggles. And we want to try and avoid that, guys. So how are we going to do it? Well, firstly, there are some characters in this game who do just need speed. There is no question about it. These characters had better have your best mod sets. Now, these include, but are not limited to, Darth Revan, Moff Gideon, Commander Ahsoka, uh, Bush Leia, Mara Jade, and Grand Admiral Thrawn. Now guys, there are more characters, this also depends on your roster, but these are ones that I've picked out, and I can explain exactly why each of these deserves to have speed. Darth Revan deserves speed, guys, because if he goes first, he's going to fear the enemy team. If he fears them, they do not take turns, and this allows the rest of your team to catch up. It's going to allow you to use lower, more subpar mods, while still maintaining a strong team, both offensively and defensively. Now, the next character is Gideon, for exactly the same reason, guys. Whilst this doesn't work on defense, it absolutely works from an offensive point of view. If you have Gideon at fast speeds, you're going to be removing the enemy turn meter and giving yourself more. So automatically your team is going to go before theirs. Commander Ahsoka is here because she has an insta kill. She has a turn meter swap. Both of these reasons make her a valuable fast character. Then we have Leia. You just need her very fast because she's going to start getting that contract ramping on a Jabba team. Then we have Mara Jade. You want her fast, guys, because she's going to be starting that turn meter train. If you have her fast in your opponent, most of the time she's going to be holding on defense or dominating your opponent offensively. And then we have Grand Admiral Front. He has a turn meter swap. He has a fracture ability. It goes without saying, guys, you're going to need Thrawn well modded. Now, once you've kind of got these characters out of the way, how do we decide who gets good mods? Well, guys, this is where I introduced something that I discovered a few years back with a Zara video. Link will be in the comments. Guys, I do recommend you go watch that. It's a really good video. And it talked a little bit about levers. Now, guys, if you don't know what a lever is, I will explain it. It is basically a character in a team that allows the team to function. So from a speed point of view, almost every single team in this game, with the exclusion of Seer, which kind of still has one, but it doesn't work in the same way, has one or two characters who boost the turn meter or boost the speed in a way that allows the team to function. So for example, guys, in a Jawa team, the lever, the character who allows the team to take turns, is Jawa Engineer. So for this reason, if you have Jawas, don't worry, no, uh, don't worry so much about the other mods, but on Jawas, make sure Engineer is fast. Now, before you guys question, why is this? It's all because of the recalibrate ability. This is going to be giving Jawas and Droids 45% turn meter. So if your Jawa Engineer is reasonably fast and goes before the enemy team, most notably more Mothma teams or Geo teams, you're going to be able to give everyone turn meter, which in essence is going to give Nevit his taunt, and that's going to allow you to win. Now, before you guys say, but how do you get the you know, Engineer this quick? They actually gain speed in their unique. So for example, Mine is currently 273, he would gain 50 speed for the team, 
So it takes it to 323. And that's pretty fast, guys. It's going to be outspeeding most Geos you go up against. And it's just a nice thing to have. You know, you don't need the rest of the team to be well modded. Guys, 45% turn meter is basically going to guarantee the rest of your team go. So by having Jawa Engineer done, your Jawa team is going to perform better on offense. Now, guys, we have exactly the same story with Kyle Katan, but for a slightly different reason. Kyle Katan's kit, if we look at his unique here, guys, it is actually going to be giving him turn meter. If we have a look at his level 7, at the start of each encounter, Kyle gains 10% turn meter for each other rebel fighter ally. Now, remember, guys, Mon Mothma is not a rebel fighter herself. She prefers to watch from the sidelines, so we're going to have 30% turn meter gained at the beginning. Is very similar to what we saw with Jawas, except rather than the ability taking place, is actually in his unique, is at the start of the battle. And if you guys don't know how Rebel Fighters work, you have Hoth Rebel Scout in there who is going to be boosting the turn meter on a basic. That does not mean you need Hoth Rebel Scout to be fast because Kyle's the one giving the turn meter. Because Kyle going first means Mothma and everyone else is going to be assisting. And you're going to be generating that turn meter from Scout and Pal, who both gain it what, respectively from Uniques and Basics. It's a really, really nice way to make a fast team. The next character is Dooku, guys, is exactly the same story. Dooku being fast is so important because his special is going to be one, stealthing the team, and secondly, giving 15% turn meter to all Separatist allies. As you can see here, guys, my Dooku is plus 151, and under a trench team, he's effectively 4 to 450 speed once things get rolling very very good character to have first then we have rogue one this is another example of a lever guys just make sure you're always paying attention to the kits to the abilities because you're going to find out there's always that character you never knew needed to be fast now the reason why radis is very good and you could argue that Jin is actually the lever on the team it could be either or uh, so we'll actually add her in there for you guys uh, so you can decide from yourself so the reason radis is such a good lever in the rogue one team is all because of inspiring maneuver when he uses inspiring maneuver he gives 30 speed to the rest of his team that in itself is insane guys now this is going to allow yourselves to get rolling not to mention when he gives people spark of the rebellion and it's removed you're gaining 40 percent turn meter so you're gaining speed and then if it's taken away you're gaining turn meter which is effectively the same as speed in this circumstance really really strong now guys if you're wondering why you'd use Jin as the lever in this team it's actually because of her special it's this one which removes turn meter and gives herself that turn meter back and it's this one here which is actually going to be giving 100 percent turn meter to someone on your team really really good here guys uh, so you can use either of them to boost the mods now like i said guys you don't have to have the whole team well modded don't worry about cassian don't worry about k2 any of these guys mod them for what they need your know, potency protection health whatever they need focus on one or two characters at max for speed this way you can really balance your mods and make sure you're getting the most value out of your roster for a five of first team or a clone team you're going to be using rex as the fastest character guys this is because for every five of first ally on his team he is going to be giving himself four percent speed so in the general Skywalker team, he is going to be gaining 20% speed. If you're using the Krex team, I had a Jabba video on, link should be somewhere up here somewhere. You're actually going to be gaining 8% um, speed, but it still adds up guys, uh, because Rex is a pretty slow character, mine's 292. But if you factor in the speed gains in a gas team, he is going to be going all the way up to 350. Now, in a gas team in 3v3, he is going to be going up to um, 327. And then in a Krex team, he is going to be going up um, a sad, sad amount, guys. It's not as good. He's going to be going up to 315. So it's still important to have him fast because not only does he give himself speed, he then gives turn meter so guys it's very important to have these characters fast the next character on the list is the inquisitors this is the first one where i really would recommend two characters at decent speeds 
Unfortunately, Inquisitors have the downside of being Chiratech heavy. They also have the downside of needing multiple characters with good mods. Unfortunately, we can't really help ourselves there. Now, the reason being, if you do not have Reva, the most important thing for making an Inquisitor team function is getting GI's six stacks of perch. This gives him a bonus turn. This increases his speed, his offense, and allows him to give you the speed up, tenacity up, and all the bonuses from applying torture. Now, guys, the reason you're going to want these first is Seventh Sister, when she removes buffs, replaces the buffs with a stack of perch. And then Fifth Brother will come in and AoE, which also increases perch. Doing these two, one back, like back to back, is automatically going to gain you the six stacks of perch against almost any team. GI goes and the turn meter train starts rolling. For this reason, you're going to want them both first. Obviously, if you have Reaver, it does change the modding ever so slightly, and you don't really need to worry as much because you're gaining that purge early on. But it's still really nice to have these because Seventh especially is a controlling character. Uh, also, guys, if you have them first, you're going to be able to control those JMK teams. You have the turn meter removal, you have the unresisted ability block on Seventh, and then on Fifth Brother, you actually have a fear on Cat or any non Jedi when you use the special on a Jedi. And it's really, really good there. Uh, for a trooper team, it's Admiral Piet, guys. If you guys are interested in how to mod the Imperial Troopers, please do check out the video. It's going to come up on the screen. Now, uh, Admiral Piet is the one to make fast, and this is because of his Emperor's Trap buff. Not only that, but a lot of people seem to miss out on the fact that he is actually gaining a lot of passive turn meter. Uh, Piet gains 5% turn meter whenever another Empire ally takes damage. So even if he isn't the fastest he can be, he's most likely going to be taking that turn. It's very important to have Piet fast because the quicker you get the mark off, the quicker your Imperial Trooper team will dominate your opponent. Now, if you guys are Wookiee enthusiasts like myself, Tarful is the one to go for. And the reason for this, guys, is Tarful gains a lot of speed. He gains 20 speed from his unique, uh, which is down here, so 20 speed. And he's also giving himself uh, a lot of turn meter. Whenever an ally has a buff dispelled, Tarful gains 10% turn meter. Now, Tarful actually has a dispel in his kit. It is a team dispel. You start the battle, you get going, you dispel all the debuffs, Tarful goes again. And the best thing here, guys, is he has Wookie Fury, which is also going to be boosting your team from the get-go. Honestly, Tarful is a great fast character. He's easy to get fast. Mine's 344, and when you factor in the 20 speed, he's almost 370 speed. Really, really underrated character for speed, guys. Next up, we have Jedi Knight Revan. Jedi Knight Revan falls into a slightly different category, and the reasons because he has a turn meter swap, guys. If you have Jedi Knight Revan unlocked, you should absolutely have him first. You can use him to swap to Jedi Knight Luke, to Joe Lee, to Bastila, any of these characters. Grandma Seoda is a good one as well. And you're really going to be able to utilize uh, your mod sets because he's going to allow even the slowest of characters on your team to take turns. Now, guys, if you're wondering who the other Jedi are, other than Galactic Legends, uh, Grandma C. Yoda is a fantastic candidate for a fast character. Now, I don't have the best mods on him right now. Um, I'm always remodding, guys. It sounds crazy, but I'm literally remodding almost every day, always changing things around. I just don't have enough six dots to go around at the moment. Grandma C. Yoda is very good here, guys, because of his basic ability. If the enemy has 50% more health, Yoda gains 40% turn meter and foresight. So he gives himself foresight, he gives himself turn meter, not to mention this ability here is also giving turn meter, which is really, really nice. Plus 10% turn meter for each other living Jedi ally. It's the same story with Hermit Yoda, guys. If you want to have Hermit Yoda fast, by all means, you should do it. And the reason for this, guys, is in Hermit Yoda's kit, uh, he is also going to be giving uh, some turn meter on the basic and also he's going to be giving some turn meter to himself on his unique. He is a really, really good character to have. It's more about the basic ability than the unique, but he does have those multiple ways of giving turn meter in the team. You guys are going to see there's a real trend here. It's characters who either give turn meter or provide turn meter and speed, which are the best. Next up, we have Dash, and Dash is honestly a cheat code in this game. So his unique, which is a Zeta, guys, is going to be giving 2% turn meter for every critical hit. 
Now, guys, if you didn't know, Dash has the OP Seeker Missiles ability. And what this is going to be doing is giving a basic unresisted daze. So you're going to be preventing the enemy team from taking turns. And then to make things better, if you're modded for crit chance, he's going to be giving absolutely crazy amounts of turn meter because he hits three times on each enemy. Now, if this crits on everyone, guys, you're looking at three times five, 15 crits times two, that is 30% TM provided from Dash doing his special. Guys, that's not where it stops. If you have his lead, he's also giving 10 additional speed to support doubled for those who are light side. Unbelievably good, guys. Um, Dash is a fantastic fast character. I really do hate it when I see people with Dash and he's like 260, 270. I mean, he still functions like that, but the faster, the better. I would say Dash is one of those characters who should be like 320, 330 speed. Next, we have the Phoenix and Clones booster, and that is Captain Rex. Captain Rex is so good because he starts the turn meter train. On a Phoenix team, he's going to be cleansing, he's going to be providing dazes, tenacity down, assists, you name it he's doing it in a clones team he's also doing a very similar thing he's very very good guys now like piet he also has a standard sort of uh, turn meter gain in his kit whenever he's debuffed he's gaining turn meter and this does provide the same benefits to other phoenix members thanks to Hera's lead but honestly guys a fast rex is scary to deal with uh, also having him super fast because you have to work out turn meter i'm gonna have a video come out in the next uh, few weeks if you guys are interested which will break down how turn meter is calculated and how to work out turn meter versus speed versus everything else you can work out when it comes to that and honestly you do need, still need rex fast because some teams will still outspeed him for example if you want to use him to beat lord vader not only do you have to factor in his speed gain his turn meter gain you have to factor in the fact that reaver or lord vader or any of these characters are gaining speed gaining turn meter gaining speed up and all the calculations become a bit messy having a fast rex enables you to outspeed this and dominate your opponent next up we have the first of the resistance characters and this is resistance hero thin he is fantastic guys because of his strength of will ability what this is going to be doing is it's going to be swapping turn meter and if you guys don't know the zori team is a turn meter monster so if he is very fast imperial troopers will not win a lot of other counters will not win so for example my fin is uh, 352 and i would say honestly he is, should be one of your top five fastest characters i honestly think thin is worthy of that and you guys can go out there and try it for yourselves now we have the tuscan lifter and it is a rarer and uh that is because he gives speed up and he gives 100 percent turn meter guys if you didn't know speed up is equal to 25 percent speed increase so if you guys didn't know as well uh tuscan chieftain is like a base 20 something i think it's 204 speed so with as simple as a 100 speed mod set you're at 304 speed now if you have a rarer go first and do his special Tuscan Chieftain gains 100% turn meter and speed up. That speed up is then going to convert if we worked it out based on, you know, something relatively cheap. And I say he has 310 speed. He's actually going to be functioning at 387. More turns means more potential to reduce cooldowns because that's what Tuscan Chieftain does. And the team starts to roll. So whilst it may seem like Chieftain is actually the character on the team that makes, you know, the team function and he's the lever. Because of the cooldown reduction, it's actually Ururu, and that's because of the constant speed up. Speed up is so important for allowing more turns. That, coupled with the fact that Chieftain is going to be reducing cooldowns, is honestly disgusting. Because you can basically keep... Sorry guys, I just hiccup there. But you can basically keep uh, the um, special off cooldown almost the entire battle really really good character for you guys to work on next we have the gg lifter and it is b1 and this is because you want to be applying target lock now it's slightly different because it's more about removing a uh, uh, turn meter from your enemy rather than gaining although you do gain a lot anyway but it's really good to start applying target lock so you can hit that target lock and remove the turn meter from the enemy team and then the final one on this list is geo soldier you guys can see him here he's here for a slightly different reason and that is because he is the fastest geo in the team he has the highest base speed 
So even by going base 90, he's almost 270 speed at Relic. And if you can get him close to 300 speed, it's going to be shutting down a lot of those easy counters in the early game. Now, guys, there are some other notable mentions. I didn't cover every faction because this video would end up being hours long. Uh, so, for example, Chief Chirper, fantastic character to have fast here, guys, because he's gaining so much speed. Not Chief Chirper, Paplu. Uh, guys, all Ewoks look the same to me, okay? Uh, Paplu's great. 25% increased speed when he's not taunting. So if you have him at decent speed levels, he can get as high as 400 speed. Guys, there's loads more characters. Just go through there, look at kits. But you're really looking for those characters that increase speed, increase turn meter, remove turn meter, or provide turns. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that you know like button as much as you can because it does help the channel a lot. My name is Glermit, guys, and as always, have a glowing day.